I appreciate that. I think that uh, Wes and I it, it deserves out. it deserves to be in all capital letters. Justin's brainstorm. List, it, it's just it's just funny. Like he just, yeah, he all the other cards. Normally, all the other cards are in lowercase. Caps. Brainstorm, all caps. That's uh, respect for the card. Like it. So we uh, we watched Justin beat Blue White Blade uh, earlier under under the camera. And hey, Justin was actually playing for top eight in the standard event yesterday. Oh Over yeah. There was a. Uh, watching a match while you guys were doing commentary on my break. Nice. Yeah, he seems like a pretty tight player. Uh, I heard he, uh, he made a small mistake when he was under camera. Well, he forgot to play a land the one yeah, turn. He it was, was, he was saying that he was under the camera. and Yeah, just a little nervous. Just a little nervous. So, so a Delver from Scott, so he's the first to get the, uh, the namesake onto the board. Uh, Justin's going to go ahead and kill that immediately. Yeah, chain Lightning for Delver. Seems like uh, the obvious play. And Probably the correct play. Yeah, Justin. Uh, He's gonna go ahead and force that. That's a really aggressive force. Yeah. And Scott uh, really trying to protect that. Uh, especially that when Delver. he's on the play. And uh, force of you know, will meets days. And that's strongly favoring Justin here. Yeah, especially with Scott on the play. It's gonna be rough now for Scott to come back from that type of uh, that type of Two card the player to draw. Scott on the draw? No, Scott was on the uh, Scott was on the play. Okay. Or no, Scott was on the draw. You're right. I'm sorry. I thought, I thought he just played his second land yeah. after so, Justin returned his second yeah. land already. So. Both players with a pair of tropical islands on the table. Scott dropping down to 18 here. These decks play very few lands that can actually actually produce mana. Most of their lands are uh, fetch lands. Yep. Go and grab those. Great with the Delver as well, and all the uh, you know, getting a fresh, fresh uh, set of cards on top after a brainstorm. You, uh, you want a pair of Nimble Mongies? That's going to be pretty good. And uh, Got a it's also going to be pretty hard to race. Justin, yeah. So uh, what happened earlier was Justin. Justin, I think, played a turn two ponder. With you know, not hadn't played his land yet. And uh, you know, pondered, put some cards back, drew, and said go, and wasn't thinking, did not play his his land drop, his second land drop, and then had to discard. So it was a pretty pretty bad situation. I mean, you don't want to start off a game like that. But he actually won that game. So. All right. Well, Justin has a Delver of his own, and uh, we'll see if Scott has an answer. And now uh, a uh, Delver for Justin. If he flips this soon, he's going to have a uh, real chance of, you know, fighting with these nimble monkeys. Yeah, make it, make and it uh, with that brainstorm having just resolved, I would not be surprised if he flipped it right now. And yeah, that's what happens. So and that's what you want to do with the Delver. You use the brainstorms to set it up, and then you get a nice 3-2 flyer for just one blue mana. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. It's It's... Pretty incredible, really. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he adds to the force with a Tarmogoyf. And um, Tarmogoyf's gonna do here, a great job holding off those Nimblemongies. Yeah, and it's cool too, cause uh, you know, for Justin here, just the the Delver itself already being flipped wins the race against the two Mongies. Now the Tarmogoyf being there uh, to hold those off, it's looking real good for Justin right now. Yeah, and Scott's gonna go ahead and try to daze that, but. Uh, Justin's just going to be like, okay, thank you very much, another free card. And uh, uh, Justin has accrued so many free cards in this game already, from the uh, from the Force of Will to the to this days. I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty hard for Scott to win this one. All right, so he pays for the days. And uh, Scott have any other answers? No. So Tarmogoyf resolves. And the Tarmogoyf is have... really hard to deal in this matchup. Yeah, the only thing between that uh, that that Delver and that Goyf and Scott's life total is his uh, his tropical island and his two volcanic islands. And some little mongies. Yeah. Mongies. <laughs> All right, so we have lightning bolt. Lightning bolt on Tarmogoyf and. Uh, oh, on uh, Delver. Oh, on Delver rather. I'm sorry. And uh, I mean, Justin can just freely swing with this Tarmogoyf. I don't think uh, he's too worried about it. The Tarmogoyf alone races the two Nimble Mongies very well. Tarmogoyf now a 4-5 to the 1-1 uh, of these two Nimble Mongoose. This is... Mongooses. 
the correct plural of mongoose is mongooses, but mongoose is way more fun to say. It is. And it's less syllable, so... I like m so. mongoose. So, uh, Ponder resolves. Justin in with the goyf and plays a nimble mongoose of his own, and I have a feeling that Justin's nimble mongoose is a little bit bigger than Scott's nimble mongooses. Yep, it looks like Justin's has threshold. Yeah, and, and not only that, also has a delver of secrets. Yeah, so, has a little buddy. <clears throat> yeah. All right, he's going to brainstorm with that delver trigger on the stack, and he's going to make sure that the okay. delver transforms here. And he reels the spell pierce, and that's going to be especially strong here with Scott just only having those two lands in play. Scott's going to be forced to claim their land before he. Uh, attempts anything and it's gonna be really hard for him to double spell ever in this game so now Justin can uh, attack with the team and that is a 4-5 Tarmogoyf, a 3-3 three, three Nimble Mongoose and a 3-2 Insectile Aberration for a total of 10 damage if Scott chooses not to block at all he's going to fall to 1 here pretty dangerous to fall below 3 against the deck that has the ability yeah. to bolt you and chain you and <clears throat> You know, exactly. Snapcaster chain you and everything like that. So and, uh, he decides he's going to go to five. But I don't know if there's anything he can really do off the top of his deck. One other notable thing is that uh, Scott has only played one boltable creature anyway. So if Justin had burn, he couldn't use it on the the mongooses. So it was yeah. if it was there in his hand, uh, he was just going to be holding it until until Scott was in burn range. Now I didn't see any burn, and it didn't end up mattering. Yeah, Justin anyway. Apple. Justin Apple is out of the game. Justin Apple is probably yeah. Yeah. Well done by Justin here. Yeah. He just plays plays really well. I mean I know he made some uh, you know, mistakes. Maybe he's gonna get match, comfortable underneath yeah. the camera, you know? He is. It takes a little bit of time. time. He's in the same seat too, which you know, sometimes you know you just naturally go to where you were last, right? Yeah. You're like, I'm going to sit in the same seat. And he's kind of feeling like he's at home in the tent there, so. I'm actually somewhat superstitious about the side of the table I sit on. I like to start uh, south or east and then alternate that on the side of the table so I get to the pairings as fast as possible and then make sure I get on the side of the table I want and I alternate <laughs> back and forth. Su <laughs> stupid superstition. I mean, if somebody's already sitting there, I obviously go to the other side of the table, but I know I stand no chance then. <laughs> I would normally say that's weird, but since we're live, I'll say that's really interesting. interesting. I'm actually kidding. I don't do that, but... <laughs> good save. Good save. <laughs> no, really, I don't. Seriously. <laughs> Alright, so looking at these sideboards, uh, Justin has access to... Uh, two red elemental blasts, three counterbalance, and oh, two sensei top, and three submerge for this mirror match. Where uh, Scott see. also has some submerge, one mm -hmm. red, red elemental blast, and two pyroblast. And um, uh, he has some spell pierces, so I'm not sure if he's going to bring those in. Uh, those are you know good if you're playing against the rock deck that has access to cards like Jace, but if they're not casting Jace, I, I don't really think that's the card you want to bring in here. Fair point. Um, I just do want to point this out. Don't think it matters too much, but Scott has chill in his sideboard. Haven't seen any warmth though in his sideboards. You know, just respecting the mono red. Well, I've actually I've talked to two people today who mm -hmm. said they had warmth in their sideboard, and they they dispatched of multiple mono red decks. Okay. So maybe the mono red decks are being weeded out by the people who finally <laughs> decided to respect up and them, decided yeah. to include those warmths. But those people who decided to include those worms might have softer sideboards against the rest of the field, and maybe they get weeded out toward the end by the people who were able to dodge the red decks. Yeah. It's a careful balance, this game of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, there is, especially in Legacy, I think. Yeah. I mean, some people are uh, playing Light and Tutor, and those people have it easy. They can just yeah. include one warmth, and they're good I to like go. It. it makes them feel all uh, warm and fuzzy. Yeah. All right, so... Uh Okay, Scott's uh, just putting his cards back. So it's an interesting match. In the top eight of the Pro Tour. A couple yeah, interesting matches. What do we What do we know? Who uh, 
This is the semifinals are happening in the Pro Tour, right? Yeah, the semifinals are currently happening. Uh, Yelger was defeated in three straight games by Paulo Vitor Damodarosa. And uh, Mamoru Nagai defeated Lucas Blohan 3-1. to one. Uh, PV is now fighting against Mamoru, and uh, it seems like that should be an interesting matchup. Both of them are playing Primeval Titan decks. So PV is, playing the guy a is playing a red-green version. Yeah, I was going to say, Nagai is the black-green version? Yes, he's playing a black-green Primeval Titan deck. And you, you suspected that he may be able to go all the way, didn't you? Yeah, when I looked at the deck list last night, I thought Mamoru Nagai was a favorite to win the Pro Tour. And I know there are so many superstars in this top eight that... You know, he's, he's not the first person who you pick out to win the Pro Tour, but his deck list uh, in, in this field, in this top eight, he seems really well positioned. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, we have Brian Kibler playing against John Finkel, probably one of the most epic Pro Tour top eight matches of all time ever. These are two Hall of Famers. Brian Kibler is somebody who is, you know, currently at the top of his game. Somebody who was, you know, pretty good back in the day and then made a comeback and proved that he was better than ever before. And John Finkel, you know, he's GOAT. Greatest of all time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always, I remember seeing that meme. What does GOAT mean? Um, I think, uh, I think Kibler's up a game in the, in the match. Yeah. Kibler's up a game right now, and I think uh, he's, you know, resolving an Inferno Titan right now. <laughs> Things are looking too good for, uh, for John at the moment. So, here, I think that, uh, I think Justin's counterbalance top is going to be really good in post boarded games here. Yeah, and that's exactly what I like about the uh, this particular iteration of the Rug Delver list. Uh, again, inspired or or just straight up, you know, taken from the Hatfield list. And it just it it's a great uh, it's a great kind of backup plan to have because you can just lock somebody out of the game with counterbalance top, and, uh, and that that's. Pretty, pretty strong. Now Scott has uh, access to Ancient Grudge for the top, but it's that's pretty hard to Ancient Grudge at top. It is jump through exactly, a lot of hoops. exactly. Yeah. So I mean, that's it. Kind of seems like that's really not enough. As good as Ancient Grudge is, <laughs> it's uh, it's not necessarily the best card against Sensei Savani top, and it's certainly not doing anything to counterbalance. So he's going to have to get those on the way down. I think I appreciate Justin Apal. Well dressed to the Magic Tournament. I feel like <laughs> being dressed for success is something that's, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's important. Fun. It's it's nice. He also, uh, you know, he knows proper etiquette. Bottom button unbuttoned. <laughs> uh, he's happy. Yeah. He knows we're talking about his good style. Absolutely. And uh, looks like Scott's mulliganing here, and that's unfortunate. A mulligan on the play in this type of matchup is kind of rough, especially if you uh, don't have Nimbomongis or uh, creatures where you know your opponent can't just you know be at parity with removal spells. Those become really important when you're mulliganing because you need cards that are hard to interact with. Yeah, Justin looks like he's having a good time, and I love to see that. I think that's just like you know, again I said it yesterday, like you're playing this awesome game. And it's just, you know, as, as frustrating as it can be when you lose, you know, really just think about it. You're playing this amazing game with Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I like community. more than playing Magic. Yeah. Just, yeah. Doing commentary like this is so wonderful because I get to, you know, sit around and talk about Magic all day. And it's, it's such an awesome opportunity. But at the same time, when I'm sitting here the whole time, I just wish I was there playing Magic. Yeah, sometimes it's <laughs> just like, man, I want to be playing. But it's awesome to be just able to watch. All right, so uh, Scott on six cards. Let's see if he likes what he sees. He decides to keep, and he leads things off with a Misty Rainforest, and he's going to crack that. Let's see, probably grabbing a Tropical Island here. Oh, but he gets a Volk, so uh, one can probably safely assume that he already has a Trop in hand or another fetch land. And he passes the turn. So we have uh, Unlimited versus Revised, is that? Yes, the <laughs> Unlimited versus Revised, Falk Island. Looks and like a revised. Delver of Secrets. Revised provides the uh, Delver, Unlimited provides the Bolt. Yeah. And uh, we're back at parity here. Yeah. Interesting, the Unlimited Volcanic Island to go with the uh, M10 Lightning Bolt. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
You know, really, that uh, Unlimited Volcanic Island may have actually come out of a pack of, uh, what is it? Uh, Zendikar? Zendikar. Very well could have. included yeah, that. The uh, Priceless Treasures, right? Deadly yeah. Perils, Priceless Treasures, something like that was the, the tagline. So there's a uh, tropical island. And a, uh, uh, just the mana in this format is just so good. For those of you who uh, are going back and forth between Pro Tour coverage and us, I believe that uh, Brian Kibler is uh, winning the second game now. All right, or is this? Well, they. Oh, they Brian Kibler won the second game, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, he may have. I, don't, I didn't quite catch it. All right, so Scott getting to resolve a Tarmogoyf. That's pretty big here. And Tarmogoyf, once it's on the table, very strong in this matchup. So how big is that Goyf? Is it a, uh, a creature to land instant? instant. So yeah, it's, it's three, a 3-4. Four. Four. All right, Nimble Mongoose and Delver for Justin. Yeah, Justin uh, choosing to uh, keep the Nimble Mongoose in here. Uh, the one problem with the Nimble Mongoose in this matchup is that it gets trumped by the Goyf. So once your opponent has the Goyf in play, your Mongoose kind of loses a lot of its oomph. Right. And this mulligan from Scott, you know, not seeming to affect him much. No, he seems to be recovering very well from that mulligan. He had the answer for the turn one Delver. No, I mean, the name of the deck is Rug Tempo, so being on the play is pretty important in this match. And Scott plays a Delver of his own. Let's see what Justin has here. And he flips up a Spell Pierce. So he did choose to keep in the Spell Pierce or bring it in. One or the other. And uh, he's got an Insectile Aberration now. And he's going to bash him with both of these. I mean, he would gladly trade this Nimble Mongoose for that Delver, I believe. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, counterbalance from Justin. Ooh, a Counterbalance. So this a pretty Counterbalance good one. Resolve, it appears to have resolved. All right, just Delver by itself. It's interesting because I would have I would have swung in with the the mongoose as well. And, yeah, uh, I mean I would have been happy to trade, trade there. Right, you're, you're probably just getting in. But he, does he really want to chump block? Maybe he wants to chump block the goyf. Ooh, Scott forgot to reveal. Ooh, did he did he draw a? Uh, uh, it may have been a snapcaster mage. We might have not been able to flip, but I know it was a blue card. So I think snapcaster is the only blue creature. Yeah. Yeah. Besides and, uh, Delver itself. Oh wow, nice. Justin actually. You know, with a solid read there, thinking that his opponent's going to attack with a Delver, Scott may be the type of guy who just always turning his guy sideways. There are a lot of Rook Tempo players who kind of play the matches that way. Mm -hmm. And maybe he knew that he was just going to, you know, not block if he attacked, but attack if he didn't. So, you know, strong play by Justin there. And, uh... Here comes Snapcaster. A Sensei top on the top for Justin, and, you know, Snapcaster Mage gets to resolve, but, uh, you know, it looks like all the, uh... All the instances Scott would want to cast from his graveyard cost one, so he's just left with a 2-1 vanilla. It can bring the beats just fine, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, a, a bear is perfectly reasonable at this stage of the game. But, uh, you know, Scott's got to worry because next turn, Justin's almost certainly going to... Uh, ooh, a submerge, and that's a really, really strong play here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and submerge is really good because it's also going to, you know, slow Justin down from finding that top. Exactly, kind of a little plow under sort of uh, situation there. He's got to redraw it, replay it, has to resolve again. He has to reflip it, and we already know it's not going to flip off that top. Because yep. the top is what's what's on top. So all right, he's going to trade his Delver for uh, Scott's Snapcaster, and that seems perfectly fine here. And in the meantime, Tarmogoyf got in for a little chunk and Justin may be under 10 now at 10 okay yeah Justin at 10 now uh, with a sensei top and counterbalance in play he's gonna yeah. be able to take a couple hits from this Tarmogoyf it's gonna fall to seven here and with the counterbalance top in play you know he's got he's got a, a very very solid grip of control on this game so as long as he can find some way to keep that Tarmogoyf in parity perhaps a Tarmogoyf of his own he's gonna be in fine shape this game but if he's unable to do that in the next two turns he's just going to die yeah it's nice that he's got that top and a fetch land there so he's going to have a, a lot of opportunity to find an answer for the boy uh, 
but it's the fetch land because now. the fetch land actually speeds up the clock by a turn. Exactly. So he, it's it's like he's. I mean, if he doesn't have an answer, he doesn't have an answer. So he's going to have to crack the fetch, and that's what, and what it looks you get like. Cards here. deeper, like one more turn without popping that fetch, you see very, very few cards in relation to how many you get to see if I you see. did. So. I think it's worth it. I agree with Justin's play there. Yeah. All right, uses the top. And I think he drew a submerge. Yeah, he found a submerge there, and that's definitely going to be good enough here. I didn't know what I was doing, but I got a comparison. All right, and uh, yeah, I think Justin's got this one at this point. All right. Goyf tries to swing in for lethal, submerge. From Justin, does Scott have an answer? Did he draw an answer? We got Brainstorm, I see Delver. I think some lands. I think there's just two two lands, Brainstorm, Delver, or, or what's in his hand. All right, Submerge works. And uh, that's going to be real tough for Scott to resolve again. Yeah, now that Counterbalance Top is uh, just sitting there, I think it's really, really rough for Scott, as long as Justin is uh, relatively safe with uh, his mana and doesn't you know overextend with it. Yeah, he can just prevent Scott from ever resolving another spell again. All of Scott's spells cost, you know, like one, one or two, two right? except for Submerge <laughs> and Force of Will, and those are both reactive spells, not ones that actually kill Justin. So, you know, even uh, Fire Ice, you know, it deals you four damage when you reveal it off Dark Confidant, but when you're trying to counter it with the Counterbalance top, it's you, only you two. Choose, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he goes to two here, cracking a fetch land after uh, activating top and not seeing a one. So he's gonna use the top again. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think that's perfectly fine. And he's always got the top itself. It finds a nimble mongoose, great. So uh, yep. mongoose will successfully counter the brainstorm. And uh, also successfully counter a Delver if Scott uh, wanted to play that, but yep. instead, Scott's all right. Scott's gonna go for a Tarmogoyf. Plays that Tarmogoyf again. And, um, Justin allows that to resolve. That's interesting. I think he has another submerge. Yeah, I think he does also. So uh, Justin plays and then Mongoose checks to see if he has threshold, which he probably does. But that's no, Scott. He's at two. That time we is lethal. <laughs> Scott thinking about his play here. Scott's trying to force through something, but right. I mean, and he did it. It was pretty, pretty uh, difficult here. You know, it does have threshold, by the way. Uh, yeah. We, it's interesting. You know, we were saying how tough it was going to be to resolve that Tarmogoyf, and we saw exactly how Scott did it. Tried to resolve Brainstorm. Justin did not want that to happen, so he counters the Brainstorm and gets the Tarm Scott gets the Tarmogoyf through. Now, unfortunately no. for Scott, Justin saw the, the submerge and could very well have uh, been able to counter the Tarmogoyf. Uh, just maybe he didn't have the, uh, he knew there wasn't a two up there, so just didn't even bother activating it, activating the top and trying to counter the Goyf. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting uh, sort of uh, situation. Oh, huh, he does not have that submerge? Either that or he just, oh, he oh, just okay. says he he just deal with it, it with Bolt, yeah. yeah. So I think he has another submerge, though, so I guess he doesn't want to have to keep dealing with it. If he can, if he can get rid of it, that's cool, you know. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't have a two on the top of his library already, like, as it's fine, like having that submerge in your hand just makes it harder and harder for your opponent. Yeah, he's got a nice little safety valve. So here's some pressure for Justin. Yeah, Tarmogoyf comes and, down. Uh, Tarmogoyf resolves. And that's going to take some big chunks out of Scott's life total, very quickly. So Scott seems to have land, land, spell, pierce, and I believe something else. I just didn't quite catch it. Yeah, and there's the submerge on the top of Justin's deck. Uh, let's see what Delver, Justin Delver, Delver. That's right. He already had the Delver. Uh, Justin's going to drop to one here. Wow. On the brink. I mean, I think it's perfectly safe to drop to one. You yeah. counterbalance top into play. Still feels like you're shaking. You know, things are shaking. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That low. <laughs> One is all you need. So he tops at the end of the turn, draws a card, yeah. and uh, I believe we're going to see some crashy crashy with the Goyf here. 
Yeah. Wasteland. Your Wasteland the Unlimited one. Un yeah, the Unlimited <laughs> one specifically. Yeah, look, he's like the revised one. No, the Unlimited one. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Scott actually tried to put the revised one in the graveyard. <clears throat> I want the one that was printed in 1993. Yeah. <laughs> so here goes Goyf. Goyf coming to the red zone here for Justin. Scott, hoping that uh, there's some chance of him forcing through a burn spell here. Now, is that Goyf still just a 3 4? Is this creature instant land? Yes, so. Yeah, I mean, post board, I don't think there are any sorceries in either of these right. decks. I mean, I think Tarmogoyf is in permanent 3-4 land in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's unless the uh, the counterbalance gets countered or removed somehow. No, yeah, or like it's the top, top gets top, countered, right. yeah. All right, so uh, Tarmogoyf crashing Three again. at a time. Yeah, three at a time here. Oh, well, we'll have six at a time if this one resolves. And it and that does. That up by the clock by a full turn. All right. So Scott. Uh, Scott chooses Scott to just pack it up. Him up. Yep, and Justin says, like, I kept a one and a two on the top of my deck. There's nothing you could have done. Wow. And yeah. Justin knew Paul. Justin too played low. that game very well. He, he you know, bided his time, yeah. you know, chose, like, a, a line for each series of threats that Scott, like, presented to him. And, you know, took a couple hits from Tarmogoyf, even though he had answers in his hand, so that he could assemble a counterbalance top.